Welcome to Happy Naked. And this is Dee, the founder of Dee Health and Fitness and author of the book, Happy Naked. I'm a personal trainer, energy worker, and I also have a degree in computers. So my mission for this uh, interview and all the interviews that you have seen in my channel, it is to share the naked truth through taboo conversations and Roy stories that will allow you to elevate your sex life, relationships, intimacy, health, fitness, and overall well-being. So please, don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Facebook. You can find me under Dmago Happy Naked. You can find also my page on Facebook and uh, Naked Fit or the Health and Fitness. And you can follow me on all the different things um, you know that I do that is going to help you to elevate you know your life. It's about elevating the vibration of this planet. And um, but we need to start with ourselves first. That's that's you know that's a rule. You start with yourself first. And then, you know, as a collective, everything else is going to be much, much better. And, uh, and I want to share a story about, um, about, about me, okay? And how Linda, who is my guest today, and I end up, you know, connecting. So in the last eight years of my life, I have been developing a big passion for sex, relationships, and love. Okay, which also lead to intimacy at the end of the day, right? All the intimate relationships. But this passion of mine started as a result of my divorce and, of course, heartbreak. Nothing, it's always like that. Heartbreak, it's always there. This always have to be a, a traumatic experience where we all cry a lot. And and my divorce, after my divorce, I was looking to basically understand how I could have a successful relationship. Because um, for me, I, and, and, I, and I, keep, I say this a lot, I think we all get married to be with that person long-term or for the rest of your life. It's not that you just get married, you sign the paper. In my case, I have kids with him. And then you say, oh, I'm just gonna do that, this, and then we'll say, I, I will divorce. Like it's not something that you really have in your plan. It happens and, um, and, and it is what it is, right? So there's something that sometimes um, we could go back. In my case, I'm not going back. I keep moving forward and I'm learning from that experience. And, uh, and that's how you end up, um, that's how I, I, I think Tantra found me, right? And, uh, and I end up going to all these different events called Puja, and that's how I met Linda. And, and I learned a lot of different things that allow me to improve my communication. And that's what Tantra and the Pujas did to me. And um, I, it, I learned to share properly my wants and my needs in a very, in the proper way, and also my boundaries. Um, culturally speaking, and how my grandma and my mom raised me, we were always very upfront on sharing our wants and our needs. However, I don't really think um, I knew how to do it properly. And I think as we get older, all that stuff change as well, right? And then we learn all the things, and then we really need to we need to adjust and continue. <laughs> so, communication to me was something that I knew, good communication, let's put it this way, let's define this better. Good communication, it's something that to me was obvious that it was an important element in our relationships. However, I didn't know how to make it happen. And, um, and in my personal experience, what ended up happening is my ex-husband was constantly, it, it got to a point at the very end that it, it, it got desperate. It's like, hey, Denise, you need to talk to me, right? What's happening? And I thought I was sharing my thoughts. Like I thought I was like, a, dude, what are you asking? I'm telling you absolutely everything is in my mind. And I learned that that wasn't the case. <laughs> and, um, and after what it turned out, I, and, and how I knew this, it is because after my separation, I ended up in another relationship and I was forced to have good communication because it was a long distance relationship for a moment, right? 
And, uh, and in order to be in a long distance relationship and have, you know, be successful on that, you know, communication have to be quite sharp. Right. So then, you know, that, you know, that you guys are on the same page. So that's when I actually knew, oh my God, I understand now what my ex-husband was asking me. Right. It is, it is quite sad. However, uh, we're both now in successful relationships. I hope he is anyway. I am. <laughs> so, but anyways, but that's how it end up happening. Right. So, and this time, and I'm sharing all this stuff with you guys because, um, and I'm going to introduce you to Linda, who is being, we have been in an event together and I have been in events where she has, has been facilitating as well. She is an incredible individual. So her name is Linda Switzer and uh, she's a B bachelor in education and is a relationship alchemist neurotransformational business and relationship coach, facilitator and educator who works with individuals, couples, families, and a larger groups to identify, ease and replace limiting beliefs and to dramatically improve their communication to enhance their quality and depth of connection. She believed that the concepts she teaches are skills anyone can learn to create ease, grace, and flow in relationship with family, co-workers, friendship, neighborhoods, and romantic partners. She knows these tools change life and reinvigorate stagnant relationships. Linda has empowered individuals, couples, families, and groups to learn and confidentially apply conscious communication skills to up-level their relating by changing all habits of communicating, to attain personal clarity, and to prevent and overcome conflict. Oh my God. So she is trained, certified educator, business relationship coach, and change agent with 20 plus years of experience teaching, coaching, running her own business, and transforming life. Her passion is to lovely and tenaciously support and inspire others to live a life they love. So Linda holds bachelor degrees in arts and education from Wilfrid Laurier, Queens, and Queens of University. So welcome, Linda, and thank you, thank you very much for being here today and saying yes to this. <laughs> yes, I'm a yes. <laughs> awesome, awesome, thank you. So, well, you have an amazing background, and, um, and I, for what I know of you also, that's been life that has been taking you through this journey, right? Right. I mean, very similar to your story in regard to I've been married and 17 years of um, what would be clinically defined as a sexless marriage. And so I know your topic is taboo. So let's just dive right in and just throw yes. in throw in the three letter S word right straight away. And, um, yes. I, you know, D, you and I have a great great camaraderie and rapport and relationship. And so I, I know that when we have a conversation, whether we're being recorded, anyone else is listening, or it's in complete confidential private setting, that we're gonna they're we're gonna we're gonna call it out straight and we're gonna we're gonna give give each other the 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 unfiltered version, right? And we'll we'll talk about whatever topics lots of other people are uncomfortable with or terrified to talk about. And so yeah. nothing has ever been off the table between us since we first met. And I love that. I love that about our relationship. And I love that um, about both of us that we're not talking about. Um, so sex, yes, um, you know, and communication because these things go together. And yes. And, um, you know, in case somebody w was wondering what is the clinical definition of a sexless marriage or relationship, it's less than 10 times in one year to have um, intimate connection, meaning intercourse. And so um, that was not working for me. And yet I continue to try really hard because my commitment was strong. And so five mm -hmm. counselors later, um, we made an amicable mutual decision to go go our separate ways and discontinue being married and to divorce and um and it wasn't uh you know like you said it's not something that a decision you take lightly or that you do without some tears or some some um 
you know, a, a self-reflection about like, how am I not going to take this with me where I go? Because there's a saying in personal development and it's called wherever, wherever I go, there I am. Or wherever you go, there you are, which means you're still the same person in the next relationship. <laughs> and it's certainly easy to blame it on the other person, whatever all went on. But evidently, it takes two to tango, right? We cannot dance alone. And so certainly, um, whatever is happening in a relationship, it's because of both parties. And it's the intersection and, and um, connection, interconnection between the, the people. So, woo, communication. Whoa, yes. big one. Mm -hmm. Um, I just knew after all those years and trying so hard and all the help that we sought, the books we read, the courses we took, the five counselors, there had to be a better way. And I became very motivated and inspired like yourself to find out what that could be in order to have, um, more of what we both wanted in our intimate relating relationships and, to improve myself in whatever way I could or what was necessary in order to bring that to the setting and the relationship. So that led me down a big increased path of self-development that included where we crossed over with Tantra and with nonviolent communication, with neuro-linguistic programming, with um, the Gottman, I'm a certified Gottman couples therapist, and also with EFT, which is emotion focused therapy yeah. for couples, which I'm very passionate about. And actually, which crosses over almost all those fields without even realizing that that's what it's doing. And so I have a multidisciplinary approach that I bring to a session with couples. And most of my clients are couples, but I do coach singles as well. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Individuals who are, whether they're partnered or not. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, I, I find that. Um, Intimacy, it is a very interesting uh, concept that we put on the table when, uh, when we all get in a relationship. I think there's this, you know, and you tell me if I'm wrong, but I think there's this expectation. We're going to have awesome sex for the rest of our life. <laughs> Yay! Right? Oh it's, just, it's just like that. It's <laughs> like at the same, like, um, what is that? The honeymoon phase whatever, but there is this, like, and, and, I, and I fall into the trap as well, okay, where I thought that those butterflies in my belly were going to last forever, and when they went away, I'm like, I don't love my husband anymore, I don't know, I, you know, all those crazy things that um, I, I, I personally didn't have a, a good pattern or or, or teachings, let's say, about relationships. I come from a family where they're all divorced, right? Unfortunately, um, all women are divorced. Like my, my great-grandma, like my great-granddad passed. And then she joined forces with my grandma to raise my mom and my uncles. But then my grandma was divorced twice, okay? She's 86 now, I think, somewhere around that. Then my mom also divorced. So the concept of relationships was seemed really that strong. And culturally speaking, for us in Venezuela, is not that strong either, right? Um, and, uh, and I think it is it, across the, border, the border, right? We all have a sense of that where nobody has been told us in one way or another how to have good intimate relationships, right? Because where, where would we learn it? I mean, if we didn't grow up in a household where it was modeled, it's not taught in school, right? No. And so where would, where would we learn it? From television? I mean, mm -hmm. from movies, Disney Channel, Hallmark Channel? I mean, I, I, you know, most of the time, these things are, are really um, fantasized versions of reality and certainly they're misleading if we're thinking that that's what it's going to be like and we're also as you said heavily impacted by our, our parents and our upbringing and i want to acknowledge my privilege i i grew up in a in a um, predominantly um, white neighborhood with um, middle to upper class families 
and parents who are still together and who are very loving. I, I was not abused. I have not been abused. Um, you know, I don't, I don't have, uh, I've really lived a very blessed life and I don't have a lot of trauma. And I actually thought when I got married that I would get exactly what I had from my upbringing with my parents, <laughs> right? I thought, oh, I just have to find someone who wants to stand up there with me on that one day. And then afterward, it'll be just like what mom and dad have. And, and I, and as far as sex goes, coming back to, you know, one of our favorite topics, D, you know, I thought, it was going to be an all you could eat buffet. Like I'm married now. Right. So it's, you know, cause I was raised Catholic. So it's going to be religiously. Okay. It's going to be morally. Okay. It's going to be legal. It's going to, it's every, there's like all green lights here. It's, we can do it as much as we want, as often as yeah. we want any way we want. Cause this is my husband. And so when it turned out to not look like the Disney Hallmark channel, you know, whatever Hollywood version and even the real life version that I grew up with, with the modeling of my parents, I was really shocked. And I, I quite didn't know really what to do about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it is, it is interesting. I, um, I recently, cause I was thinking about that, right. I said, I, I, I have teenagers um, mm -hmm. and I'm like, how, uh, I think, um, you know, I look back and my mom was quite open when it was about sex and all that stuff, you know, compared to other parents. Mm -hmm. um, she will talk to me openly about it, like it is fine to have sex with whoever you want. You don't have to marry somebody if you're having sex. Like it's not like that. So she was quite open and talking about condoms and all that kind of stuff. And um, however, um, I, it wasn't a fun topic to have with your mom. And my mom is quite open. She shares stuff with me sometimes. Like a, I'm really like, a, I don't really want to hear that from you particularly. <laughs> like, thank you for sure. I don't say it, right? I don't say it to her because she's basically trusting her experiences with me. But sometimes I'm like, I don't really want to know what my mom really does in the bedroom with my stepdad. <laughs> well, she loves you and she wants to help. And her heart is in the right no, place. But anyway, taking that as an example, I'm thinking about my kids because I'm pretty open with them. Like uh, my keychain is a penis. And they're like, why, mom, you have that? I said, well, I can bring a vagina if you want so you don't feel left out. <laughs> and then they're like... But why you have to be like that? So, so that is not an issue with me and my kids. However, there's still a level of how can I share stuff with them where they don't feel awkward and they're learning, right? Because that's, you know, I can make fun of it. We joke. I open, I talk openly with my kids, no problem. But then the, the question was like, still, how can I, how can I teach them? to get in touch themselves with their own body. Because how the heck, because that's the other thing. How the heck do you get intimate with another individual if you don't even know yourself, right? Like how, like how do you think it could be a good starting point for people to have, because how the heck do you have that conversation if you don't even know yourself? Mm -hmm. I heard you say earlier that in your culture, it was, it was um, tr traditionally common for, for people to be socialized, to know how to ask for their wants and their needs. Yeah. And, uh, and I'm curious also about how different upbringings and cultures impact people's abilities to access their feelings. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking about when you say knowing your own body, you know, um, we're, we're expecting people to ask for what they want and need and know what they feel and be able to state their feelings. And we even say to little kids, use your words, you know, when they're freaking out and they're using their body to express themselves, they're, right. you know, having a temper tantrum or, or doing whatever they're doing physically and uh, maybe with sounds, but not work. And we say, use your words, use your words. Right. But do, but, but where are we learning how to find the words? First of all, like, mm. How do, how do we get in touch with like 
I feel this ickiness in my body right now and I know I'm upset and things are not the way I want them to be, but I don't actually know the word for what I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. And so <clears throat> I think it's, I'm a, I, being a teacher for 25 years, I'm a big proponent of, of um, literacy. And so emotional literacy or, or um, emotional yeah. intelligence is a big part of what I teach in my communication courses and even in my ta guided tantric um, experiences. And a tool that I've discovered that I want to quickly highlight because we do courses on this, myself and my business partner who created these cards, they're called the Love Smart Cards. And inside here, we have four different decks in the set. And two of the four decks are feelings. They're emotions hmm. connected to either fulfilled longings or unfulfilled longings. And the, the big set, the green one at the front part here is the universal longings, um, values, needs, and desires. Wow. And then lastly, in the, in the red section, we talk about character strengths or qualities. And, mm -hmm. and so the, essentially, how did we learn language? We had flashcards, you know, that's what we did. We learned mm -hmm. with flashcards, that's how we increased and from practice, right? And so this helps, a, how, using a tool like this helps us to identify our feelings in a moment, whenever we're, whether you're, you're euphorically happy or we're really upset about something. And if we can go through a set of cards that just offer one option, like I'm embarrassed, yes or no. Put it in the yes pile if it's a yes and the no pile if it's a no. And then what's the next word? I'm tired. Am I tired? Let me feel myself. Uh, no, mm. that's not the issue. I'm, I'm not too tired. But because sometimes we're really upset about something and not managing well because we're tired or we're hungry or <laughs> we're thirsty or, you know, whatever it is. It's these things regarding self-care, self-resourcing are necessary first for us to relate effectively and at, at our best with another human, you know, am I feeling sensitive, et cetera. And it goes on. And so my suggestion is to try to figure yourself out first before you try to spew it all on somebody else. And, you know, what we tend to do is come at people with you statements. We come at them with you are, you are, you are being so blah, blah. And I just want to say as, you know, it, as a little quick tip, like check yourself. If you say you are, you know, how much are you criticizing, blaming, mm -hmm. shaming, mm -hmm. or complaining mm -hmm. about that other person? And I want to, I want to highlight because I'm, I'm going to, this meme I created, I'm going to put it up today on my Facebook, my coach, Linda um, Switzer Facebook and my, and my personal page, and I'll put it on my Insta as well, um, Linda Switzer, but complaining, criticizing, blaming, or shaming are very ineffective ways of getting our needs met. This yes. is the most ineffective way of getting our needs met, actually, because yes. it, it alienates us from the other human who may be able and may even be willing to support us meeting our needs. Mm -hmm. you know? And so if we can figure out what we're feeling, own our own feelings, I'm feeling tired and sensitive right now, and mm -hmm. what I need is a hug. Could I please have a hug? Could I please go for a walk with you for 10 minutes? so that we can connect. I'm needing connection with you. I'm missing my connection with humans and I would really like to meet that need with you. Yes. As opposed to, you never make time to go for a yes. walk with me and you're mm -hmm. always too busy and you're at work mm -hmm. all the time and you pay more attention to, you know, and yeah, 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 yeah. right? All that blaming, blaming criticizing, shaming, um, complaining really doesn't get you yeah. that. And yeah. I, if we, we don't talk about anything else today, that's what's most on my heart. Yeah. So if you could teach your kids how to identify what their, what their feelings are that are actually signs of what their needs are. They're also a sign of whether needs are met or not met. So yeah. when needs are met, pleasant feelings result. You know, the emotion yeah. on the cards looks like this. Like when needs are fulfilled, this is how we feel, right? <laughs> <laughs> and when needs are not met, when we have these unfulfilled longings, then this is more how we look, isn't it? Yeah, yeah totally, totally. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. That so is, emotions are a big deal. Like how they go together. One says heavy hearted, heavy -hearted. one says open hearted. And I literally, I just pulled these literally wow. off the box randomly. And so... You know, anyway, so when, yeah. when, when needs are met, 
you know, we could be feeling open hearted when needs are not met. We could be feeling heavy hearted. And so yes. anyway, yeah. you well. no, that is so true. That is so true. And, and I think this is the foundation because one of the things that we talked uh, earlier over the phone before we started this call is all the, all the um, relationship challenges <laughs> that we are experiencing in our society today. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, I, and I think, and you tell me if I'm wrong, okay? Like, depends on your opinion and experience. But my, um, I, I, I think uh, the re- one of the things that is happening in relationships today, it is the result of women liberation. We became empowered, we became independent, and I'm saying this because this is exactly how we end up doing things <laughs> like this, like, yes, we are strong. Yes, we're this. Yes, we're that, right? We can do this. We, we only need men to have babies, but then after we use their sperm, we don't need them anymore because we're completely independent, right? And even now we don't even need them for that because you can't get those in vitro. Like, like seriously, like imagine when we're coming from, I, I, I believe now more than ever, because it became stronger with all my learnings in the, in the recent years, that when we get in a relationship, we complement each other, right? We don't have mm-hmm. to be equal. There's one thing I learned is that we must have the same core values. Mm-hmm. That is what I, like, we don't have to be the same. We don't have to behave the same, right? But the core values, <clears throat> sorry, the core values must be the same. So then now, because that's a foundation. And then of course goes respect, communication, all those different layers about that. But the thing is, how the heck are we gonna have a relationship when as women, and I'm going to blame us for that, right? Because we were so empowered and encouraged and all independent, this human beings. and. Um, but then now we're getting to a point that, and I hear this a lot, is I don't need a man anymore. But what about, and, and I, I don't know, I, it, it really shocked me because as feminist as I was raised, I was never, I never thought that way. So I, I have conflict thoughts when it comes to that because I'm feminist. Yes, I grew up like being like this and educated. I went to college. I did all that stuff because I don't need a man. But at the same time, I always believe that it's, we're supposed to, we're a society to, to, to work together. I don't know. It's just all my thoughts. So just tell us about it, right? <laughs> well, I, I hear you saying, we don't need a man and a question for you. So I want to open it up to be more gender fluid and also include um, uh, same sex couples. And so, you know, I just want to say, do we need each other Mm -hmm. or are we really focused on individualism? Mm -hmm. And, 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 and then I want to maybe soften the word need to want like, years ago when I was going through the pain of this very conversation that you were talking about, because I was also raised to be very educated, independent, take care of myself, do all my own stuff, you know, and, and either be able to do it myself or earn enough money to hire somebody who, who does that for a living to do it well. Um, you know, so do I need another human in my life? For me, need isn't even the word. It's want. I just desire that. We are wired for connection. We are meant to be inter- interdependent. Our species continuing depends upon us doing that. So need, mm, I don't know, but I want it. Yeah. And if, if you want it, you know that, that feeling, you know that sensation of wanting, of mm-hmm. longing for that, mm-hmm. of longing for partnership or connection in some realm in whatever way that is spiritually, physically, emotionally, um, you know, what, in what, whatever way. Yeah. So I want to just like, so just relax into that idea of it's okay to long for that. And then, and then how does it feel to be in that place of wanting that? Whether you have it or you don't have it. And, and how does that feel? 
can you be okay with that longing existing? You know, we're getting used to not having everything we want. And we've been pretty spoiled actually for mm -hmm. a long time, our society and getting a lot of what we want. And right now we're being asked to, you know, step back from being so self-indulgent and getting everything that we want all the time exactly our way and to make decisions that might be better for the collective. At least that is is the belief of some. And so, you know, I, I, wanna, I wanna suggest, you know, do we, you know, just like you said earlier, do we, uh, we adjust and we continue? You spoke of that with regard to yeah. your, your previous um, marriage and, and your, your relationships subsequently. And so we adjust and we continue. And I think that the, the movement um, where there was a huge oppression of women that I do not want to underplay yeah. at all. Yeah. I do not want to negate or underplay at all. And there continues to be oppression <laughs> of women and uh, people for all reasons, race, religion, um, gender, etc., preference, sexual preference, sexual, sexual identity, like for lots of reasons, there's still lots of oppression. And so when the pendulum is all the way over here and then it swings all the way over mm -hmm. here, Mm -hmm. This is the course correction. This is the adjust. And my desire and hope and wish and dream for us as humans is that we land with an, a pendulum that has a little movement to it and some swing somewhere in the middle that's really a healthy place for all humans and all beings on the planet so that we can continue to coexist and not just survive, but thrive. In what are the things that you think we need? Because it's, it's, it's been like, let's, let's put it this way. The rate of divorce is, I think is 60% and increasing. Mm -hmm. okay? right. So, so how can we, how can we, because it's not about being married or not. It, I, at the end of the day, I don't think it has anything to do with it. I think it goes more with the commitment of being with somebody. Right. And uh, so, but what do you think it is? Are they the things that we, uh, could implement to have, um, I call it agreements now, right? Because agreements, we go, we're in, in, in a committed, in a, commit, a committed relationship, whether it's open, closed, whatever, whatever kind of relationship, there's a commitment there, right? And that there's also agreements. So how can we get to that point? How can we help people that are listening to start stepping into that, if, if, if you think that those are the, those are things to me that are important, what do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean it's beyond the scope of our 30 minute call that we're all already over time <laughs> 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 to say the answer to that question, because it's such a big question. And, okay. you know, and I wanna be clear that um, I'm really agnostic when it comes to relationship structure. So I'm not a proponent of, um, you know, ethical non-monogamy or polyamory or open relating or monogamy or any particular relationship style, I, I actually believe that whatever works for you is what you should do and mm -hmm. whatever brings you joy and whatever, you know, whatever the other person also wants and you find this human to travel the path of the journey called life with who wants to adventure through it with you, do it the way that it works for you. I'm not, I'm not here to tell anybody how to go about that. Um, as far as choosing relationship structure, I think that some things that we can do to enhance the quality of the experience along the way has to do with being aware of our own feelings and needs and learning how to effectively communicate those without complain, complaining, blaming, blaming, shaming, criticizing, and owning our own experience, not putting it on the other person all the time. I mean, as soon as we learn how to compassionately ask for what we want and learn how to hear no from the other person, learn how to say no and learn how to hear no, then, um, then you know, we're, we're going to up level the quality of the relationship because what we want to try to do is create a space so safe. Yeah that the other person can always express what they are thinking and feeling and wanting in every moment, whatever that looks like. Yeah. Even if it doesn't come out perfectly, even if it's, even if it's a little rough, even if we're a little cranky or a little tired, 
you know, or, or on the better days when we're, we have a lot of clarity. And so yeah. self-responsibility, <clears throat> I, I think is a super big thing mm -hmm. and up-leveling our communication skills. Mm -hmm. And there's so many other little pieces that I love to throw in, you know, and we could talk all day. It's always like this. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I know. It is. It is awesome. And I like all that you said about self-responsibility. I really, really like that. And I like also what you said about learning to say no, but mm -hmm. also we have to learn how to take it when mm -hmm. it's, it's like just to hear that, take it. And I think it goes with the, you know, the four agreements from Miguel Reese, uh -huh. which is don't take it personally. Mm -hmm. Right. Because I think that's part of it. Uh, what I think in relationships, because we're involved emotionally, we're too deep involved. <laughs> we take, we have the tendency to take things personally. <laughs> like it's just, sure. you know, a thing. And then when somebody says, let's say, I want to have sex tonight or make love, whatever you want to call it. I'm like, uh, make love is boring. But then you know, my partner would say, but I want to make love to you. We always laugh about it, right? <laughs> and uh, he's so romantic. And I'm like, seriously, just fuck me. <laughs> it's just so funny. But anyway, and, um, but then, and then the other person says, I don't feel like it because it's very vulnerable, I think, right. to ask to be intimate, right? Yes, right. And then the other person says, I know. I don't feel like it. Uh -huh. Yeah, and I mean, if you if you get the courage to figure out, well, if you if you have the the wherewithal to figure out what you're feeling and what you're needing, and then you muster the courage to tell the other human what you're feeling and what you're needing, and to ask for what you want, you put yourself out there a little bit. And so, one of the things I think that you could teach your kids is about how to hear the no. I mean, we, we indulge children a lot these days mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, there's been a whole parenting, you know, again, the pendulum has swung where we give them everything they want. And, um, and so maybe they're not really great at hearing no and they feel entitled. And I think that it's really, really important to figure out how to take the no and also what to say instead of just a flat no. Because what we fear, I believe, when we, if we can figure out what we want and, uh, and muster the courage to ask for it, we're afraid of things. We're afraid of the person saying no. And what, when they say no, we're afraid, will they judge us for what we wanted, for our desire? Will they think differently about us because we, we wanted that thing? You want it, what? You want me to do what in the bedroom? What? You know? Or will they break the connection? So does asking for what I want cost me the connection, the relationship? Yeah. Because that happens sometimes. And 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 I I you know, we're not gonna feel free and capable and confident of asking for what we want if we're afraid that that's gonna break the connection. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> or if we'll feel judged. And so again, um, a big thing that, that my clients have said and my partners have said um, is that they've never been around someone who was so non-judgmental. Mm -hmm. and, and I wanna, I, I tell them, listen, I don't care if you're into, you know, licking the toe jam out from between the middle of the big and the second toe and that turns you on and that's your thing. Yay for you that you figured out what you like and what gets you excited and gets your motor running, right? Or cranks your tractor, as, the, as they say in Alberta. It doesn't matter to me what that is. A, that doesn't mean that I have to do it or enjoy it too. But I can be happy for you that you found the thing that, that you're excited about. And I don't need to judge you because that's not my kink. That's not my thing, right? Yeah. And so... Um, and so keeping that space in the relationship where the person can tell you anything and still feel safe is mm -hmm. super uber important, you know, mm -hmm. so I love what you said about you and your, and your partner. And, you know, he can say, I want to make love to you. And you're like, wow, I want it kind of a little dirtier than that. You know, I want to get nasty. I want to like try some kinky things. I want you to, you know, whatever it is. Um, I mean, to be able to just have the freedom to have that conversation in the relationship is such a beautiful thing to be celebrated. And so, 
you know, there are ways of, of communicating about that. And, and, um, and I, 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 yeah, I have so much more. I mean, I, I, I never know when to stop talking in these kinds yeah. of things when you ask me those yeah. questions. Yeah. And, and, and I gotta say, it is so freeing to be in a relationship where there is no judgment. It <laughs> is to like, to me, it is life changing. Uh -huh. Because it is, you said, it's when you have, there is a space where you can be vulnerable, where you can share your thoughts, your wants, your needs, your feelings, absolutely everything. And you know the other person is going to take you just like that. Right. 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 And, and you said something quite key. It doesn't mean that I, I like it. Right. No, it has nothing to do with that. But I have the freedom, because it goes with freedom as well, right? To share and say anything and everything, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that is priceless. And we get, I, I, have, I have, you know, the, the pleasure to be right now in a relationship like that. And, um, and now that I know it, I understand how priceless that is, right? Like it's just, it's just crazy. It's just mind blowing. And, um, and it's, it is so, it makes me sad sometimes to hear people uh, just talking about not feeling safe, sharing their thoughts. And they have been in a relationship probably for the longest time or have been their longest relationship and they still not feeling safe to yeah, share their too. thoughts and feelings that I think it's something that um, if, if there is anything that you take out of this interview, take that one mm -hmm. that you want, you can, it is possible for you to build a relationship where you like everyone in the relationship can be free to share absolutely anything and be and 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 the other person take it without any judgment. It is possible. It is possible to 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 build that kind of relationship. And um, and Linda is somebody that can definitely help you with that, because once you once you have the experience, you're not going back. <laughs> like it's just as simple as that. That's <laughs> Oh yeah, that's so true. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. No, it is. Uh, it is. It is. It is life changing when it comes to connecting with uh, with other people, right? It goes with connection, and uh, you build a different level of intimacy as well. When you when you ha when you have developed that freedom, no judgment, uh, vulnerability, it is just. Uh, it is something that definitely just goes to a whole different level, and. Um, and I wish everyone, without exception, experienced that. That is my wish to everybody. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. yeah, that's a great mission statement for sure. Yeah, no, that's, uh, well, that's, I'm getting goosebumps. Ooh. I just did too. <laughs> oh my goodness. We've got a little energetic connection going on there. Girl. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, so that's so, uh, well, and, and you know what, uh, we get a, close here and thank you thank you very much um so tell us where people can find you and connect with you and have the experience to work with you or participate in your event i know these days events are kind of tricky but whatever you're doing just share with us what are where, where people can find you yeah awesome thank you for asking so you can find me on instagram linda switzer is my handle l-y-n-d-a-s-w-i-t-z-e-r and also on Facebook with the same name and Coach Linda Switzer on Facebook is my professional page. And I also have a private group called Relationship Alchemy. And I post relationship tips and, and ideas in there and sometimes a little bit edgier things that are for the main, mainstream um, uh, social profiles and encourage communication and conversation between participants in the group as well. Um, in that regard. And uh, there will be um, a course in this communication stuff coming up this fall that we'll be doing. My business partner who's in California and I have done this course already pre 
pre-quarantine, uh, we did it online to offer it to people all across the world. And we're going to, we've revised and revamped it and, and made it even richer and we're going to be doing it again. Um, and I also offer complimentary consultations. So if you're curious about what it would be like to work with me and you want to talk a little bit more about your own personal situation, just reach out through Facebook or Insta, send me a message and um, even my cell phone number is on my business page on Facebook too. And so I welcome any, any communication in that regard. Events, um, I'm really, I'm cooking up. I'm, I'm itchy to get back to it and I've been prospecting places and I've been uh, educating myself about all of the rules so that we work within the guidelines of what is required now. And I think that we could hold a guided tantric ceremony or journey for couples who stay together and keep two meters between them. And, um, and then if there's that distance, even in an indoor space, that we certainly can um, uh, make it work and we're not rotating so people aren't working with different people all the time but it's been a longing and on my heart now for some mm -hmm. time months and months and months to do this and I've had people ask me if I would please yeah. start doing it again and so um, so I'm really excited to do that it'll be a smaller group obviously because we have to have so much space we were used to having people uh, you know 40 or whatever people in a room and all close together and we created such a great energy vortex and I believe we'll do that again and it'll just be more spacious and, it'll, and, it'll, and a, 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 a smaller group of people. But look for that this fall, probably October or November. Oh, that's beautiful. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, and you know, I want, like, I, I want to say this again, please um, follow Linda, follow me as well. And uh, you can find me on Instagram. like look for her, uh, join her group, um, you know, book a uh, consultation with her to see uh, whether, because I think when we're looking at um, uh, like somebody that can guide us in our relationships or communication styles and all that kind of stuff, it is really important to know that we're working with somebody that it's aligned, right? especially in this. So that's where that consultation is going to give you an idea whether you guys are a match and, uh, and then all the knowledge that Linda has, it's going, I know it's going to help you all. Like I know that, however, it is that you are the one that needs to find that connection, right? With Linda and make sure that, that then she will be the one, you know, helping you in this part of your journey. So please contact her, follow me. I will be, um, you know, putting in the description all the information on how you can connect with Linda as well and follow her on Facebook, Instagram and all that stuff. That is really, really key. Connection, communication, respect, no judgment, um, self-responsibility. Uh, it is all keys for all of us not only to have good or successful romantic relationships, I think it just goes across the border with absolutely any relationship because even Linda and I are talking today and this is still a relationship, right? Because we're communicating and all that kind of stuff. So this is something that we learn and that we can put in practice absolutely every single day, 24 seven, because we're always connecting and having conversations with people. So how can we do that more effectively? And it can easily be implemented even at work. If we, it is, I, I know it's, uh, you know, I can also talk about this forever and how it helped me <laughs> even in my relation, in my work relationships, right? In my business, how I network, even how is that, you know, allow me to communicate um, in, a, in a certain way or more effectively or like, well, I'm, I'm open anyway. I'm just, I just say um, whatever I want. I'm not, I'm not diplomatic that way. <laughs> However, but it's still uh, a lot of, um, a lot of good things that I learn when it comes to, to business jobs and, you know, coworkers and, or, you know, like, business partner. It's just 
life changing. And, and I'm saying all this because I don't want you guys to think that it's just all in this tiny little box that is just, you know, thinking about romantic relationships because it's not the case. We're in, re in different kind of relationships every day and along our life, right? We just, by having these tools, will allow you to, you know, to do things smoothly, right? All of these skills and tools are for all relationships of all types, with our families as well, which can be yeah. really easy, our kids, mm -hmm. parents, mm -hmm. at work, at home, everywhere, with the male yeah. person. Yeah. yeah, definitely. So thank you, thank you, Linda. And uh, this was amazing. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dee, for having me. I'm honored to be here, and it was a super fun conversation. We can get, we can get even more taboo next time, okay? Oh, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> <Woo -hoo>. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Bye for now. Have a great day.